Hello and welcome to the sixth and arguably longest key event in British history, the Hundred Years' War. Today we're going to describe some key battles and people from the Hundred Years' War, explain what caused it and explain the consequences of it. We're going to consider this term significance and also write some evaluations. To start with, I'd like to look at the pictures on the right hand side of key battles from the Hundred Years' War. What can you learn or infer from each painting about the war. You may like to pause the video while you do this. What was the Hundred Years' War? This was an intermittent, so on and off struggle between England and France in the 14th and 15th centuries, with both countries being very powerful at the time. They came into conflict over a series of issues, including disputes over English territory, which they held in France, and all about who could become the next king of France. England had controlled a large amount of land in France since the reign of William I or William the Conqueror, and this was a source of continual friction between the two nations. So when and why did the Hundred Years' War start? So officially it's said to have started in May 1337 after the confiscation, the taking away of the English-held Duchy of Aquitaine or Guienne by the French King Philip VI. Philip had confiscated it and Edward III of England responded by saying, the French crown is mine, I should be the French king. And this set off wars that would last 116 years. So bizarrely, the Hundred Years' War is actually 116 years long. Okay, so did you know that the name Guienne comes from Agien, a popular transformation of Aquitania or Aquitania? Um, in the 12th century, it formed, along with Gascony, the Duchy of Aquitaine. Now, if you look at your picture in the top right, it's kind of in the bottom left part of France and across the middle, which passed through the kings of England, so a bit of France owned by England, after the marriage of Henry II to Eleanor of Aquitaine. Now, Eleanor of Aquitaine is a very famous, powerful woman in her own right, but famously, Henry II and Eleanor, their kids were Richard I, known as the Lionheart, and King John, who signed Magna Carta. How did the Hundred Years' War actually end after 116 years of fighting? Well, the English king, Edward IV, and the French king, Louis XI, met in France and decided on a truce instead of fighting. Edward was to leave France and receive compensation or money, and this marked the end. There was no peace treaty ever signed. They just stopped fighting. So what were some famous battles? So the first famous of the English victories was the Battle of Crecy. This took place in 1346 in the northeast of France between the French army commanded by Philip VI and the English army led by Edward III. Uh, the French attacked the English as they were going across northern France and the English archers destroyed a lot of the French forces. The French then launched a series of cavalry attacks but this was very difficult going up the muddy hills and also under the fire of the archers and Eventually, there were massively heavy French casualties and an English victory. Another famous English victory was the Battle of Poitiers. This was fought in 1356 near the city of Poitiers in Aquitaine. Edward, the Black Prince, led an army of English, Welsh, Breton and Gascon troops. He's known as the Black Prince because of the colour of his armour. They were attacked by a larger French force led by King John of France, which included some Scottish forces. The French were heavily defeated. An English counterattack captured King John along with his youngest son and much of the French nobility. The effect of the defeat on France was catastrophic, destroying the prestige or good reputation of the French upper class. The third and arguably most famous victory for the English was the Battle of Agincourt. This is where the English troops of about 6,000 soldiers defeated the French troops of about 24,000. This was a famous victory for King Henry V, and it gave English the momentum that they needed to regain territory that had been lost. And it showed once again that England was a major power in France. Uh, following that, between 1415 and 1422, the English secured the position. Henry forced the French king, Charles VI, to name him as his heir. And he, Henry, married Charles's daughter, Catherine, to strengthen England's right to the throne. Did you know that William Shakespeare wrote a play about Henry V in 1599, almost 200 years after Henry died? And today, 
Many sayings we have in the English language come from that play. Now we're going to pick two speeches that Shakespeare wrote as if Henry was saying it. These are not what Henry said himself, but what Shakespeare's version of Henry's speeches would have been. The first was just before the Battle of Agincourt at a siege in Harfleur. This is what Shakespeare believes Henry V said, although it's not the exact words at all. Once more, unto the breach, dear friends, once more. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. The game's afoot, follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England, and St. George. Later, having defeated the city of Harfleur, Henry goes to Agincourt, and the night before, or the day of the battle, he makes this famous speech. From this day to the ending of the world, be we in it, shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Inspirational stuff. Now, all of the parts of the speeches that I've put in bold are things we see today. Band of Brothers was the name of a TV series based on the Second World War, and the Games of Foot also appears in TV and literature. But how did England lose? We hear so much about the famous victories at Crecy, Poitiers and Agincourt that it can be confusing as to why England didn't win the Hundred Years' War. However, we tend to ignore the other battles over the 116 year period. So here's a summary of the results. Here is a list of all the battles from 1337 to 1353. And as we can see, there was an early back and forth followed by English dominance before France begins to pull it back. Between 1353 and 1420, we have end-to-end -end scoring before England start pulling ahead near the end. In the final 30 years of the Hundred Years' War, it's fairly even until half-time, then France go on a hot streak after an inspiring half-time talk by a young woman. But who are a couple of key people in the Hundred Years' War? Arguably the most famous Englishman in the Hundred Years' War was King Henry V, as shown on the right-hand side in the Battle of Agincourt. He was born in 1386 and he was the son of Henry IV, and he is most famous for his Agincourt victory. And he was determined in his rule to regain the lands that had been held by his ancestors, ancestors which had been lost. Uh, he captured the port of Harfleur and Agincourt and followed up that success with a conquest of Normandy. Um, after marrying the King of France's daughter, he came back to France and died suddenly, possibly of dysentery, and his nine-month-year-old son succeeded him. So did you know, I know you're thinking, why are there tennis balls on the side? Henry V, while staying at Kenilworth Castle in England in 1415, was presented with a present from the Dauphin of France, the leader of France. And it was tennis balls. Sounds nice. Wrong. This was considered by Henry V as an insult, as he was only a young man, and the idea was that he should only waste his time with tennis and not do serious things. This provoked him, apparently, to lead the campaign that led to the victory at Agincourt. Another key person in the Hundred Years' War, and arguably the most important person for the French, was Joan of Arc. She is the young woman who gave the inspiring half-time team talk that I mentioned earlier. She was a national hero, or is a national hero, and at the age of 18 she led the French army to victory over the English at Orléans. Later, she was captured by the English and burned at the stake as a heretic or a non-believer, but she was later made a saint by the Roman Catholic Church. She had a fairly ordinary upbringing. Um, her parents were tenant farmers, and she had a very n nothing particularly special about her early life. However, around the time of her sort of late teens, she began to have mystical visions, and over time they became more vivid, with the presence of St. Michael and St. Catherine, designating her as the saviour of France. She managed to convince the French Dauphin, the leader, to allow her to join the army, and she led a relief army to break the siege at Orléans. And after that, the morale of the French troops was so high that they were able to defeat the English. For our first task today, looking at the significance or the importance, who was the greatest leader between Henry V and Joan of Arc? 
Don't need to write anything down, I just want you to think about it. So you might want to pause the video now. Why is the Hundred Years' War significant? Why do we bother teaching it? Well, here are several reasons. Firstly, the consequence of it was that it possibly caused the following War of the Roses because of the disruption it caused in England. It also increased the importance of Parliament due to the fact that the King had to go back to Parliament several times to ask to be allowed to raise more money in taxes. It also increased a sense of English identity or patriotism. During the wars, there was lots of prayers made, the idea of St. George as this warrior um, saint, and also the English victories all built into this sense of national pride for the English. And finally, it sort of solidified the idea of France as the enemy and England's negative attitudes towards foreigners. And for the next sort of 500 years or so, the French were always seen as England's enemies. This was only changed at the start of the 20th century. For our second significance task, we're going to look at why the Hundred Years' War was significant. So, there's a list of consequences on the left-hand side, and we would like you to put them in order of significance, number one being the most important, and number four being the least important. You can use the sentence starter on the board to help you, and also try and include six of the explaining and evaluation words in your answer. You can pause the video while you do this. For our challenge task today, we would like to put Shakespeare's Henry V speech extracts, so the bits of them, into your own words. So we have his part of his speech at Harfleur and part of his speech before Agincourt. So put them in your own words. You can pause the video while you do this. To find out more about the Hundred Years' War, you can go to any of the resources on this picture at the moment. So you've got the Hundred Years' War from the BBC. You've got the Britannica encyclopedia entry as well, and a video at the bottom of the Hundred Years' War in 10 minutes. You can pause the video if you want to write any of these down. Great work. Thank you for learning about key events in British history with us today. Remember, this is a video, so you can always repeat it if you want to go back over something. It's not cheating. Practice makes perfect. Until next time, goodbye.